Mama and Papa are at it again. We've been traveling in our host Yukon for five months and we've been using our Berkey water filter. It's a great water filter, but it takes up counter space and we also have to empty it when we leave a site and then we have to fill it back up when we get to the next site. Kind of a hassle. So we were watching the Joslin Journey and they installed the Acuva Aeromax 2.0 water filter. We looked, saw their video, we thought it was a great idea, so we installed one too and we want to show you the process of our installation. We're gonna put a link below for the Jocelyn Journey in their channel. We chose an Acuva Aeromax 2.0 with a smart faucet. It comes with two different options for power, a 12 volt and a 110. It comes with all the parts you need for installation. It comes with the tubing and all the other accessories that you need to plumb it in. It comes with the two brackets to hold the water filter. And it comes with the faucet, of course. And it even comes with the Shark Bite Quick Connect that makes it easy to tie into your existing PEX line. They have different options for the finish of the faucet. We chose the brush nickel to go with our existing faucet. This is the 12 volt power cord. We chose to go with the 12 volt so we wouldn't have to have the inverter turned on to be able to run the faucet. This is the host Yukon kitchen setup. It has the large farmhouse sink and then underneath that's the space we've got to work in to install the water filter and all the components. This is the shelf under the sink. The first step is to remove all the screws so we can remove the shelf and then be able to see the lines underneath. Our model has very little PEX tubing length to work with. We needed to have more access under the sink, so we removed the thin back panel just behind the carpet. The next step was to pull out the carpeted panel. It wasn't screwed in, so it was easy to just lift right out. We had to disconnect the heating ductwork so that we could get to the cold water supply line back there. The blue line in the back is where we need to put the shark bite connection in. So it's gonna go about right there. The shark bite fitting comes with a valve to turn off the supply to the faucet. Our model is the Host Yukon and it has a morgue in the back and inside is a low point drain for the cold water. We're going to open that up to drain the water out of the system so we don't get a mess where we're working. To keep the counter from chipping when we drilled for the hole for the faucet, we applied blue tape. Now you put the faucet shaft in that hole and it looks like this. First you put on the spacer and next you put on the fastener and tighten it down. Now you need the other two items from the plastic bag, the tube support and the ferrule and you'll be sticking that into the end of one of the white tubes. Now you're ready to insert the tube and screw the nut onto the bottom side of the faucet, and then you will cut the tube to install the flow sensor. Connect the flow sensor by pushing it onto the end of the tube that's connected to the faucet, and then the other end goes to the part that you would cut off the tubing. Storage space is a premium. We didn't want to use up any of our cabinet space by attaching the box there. This wall is, is too th thin to secure it to. So we're going to remove a couple of the screws from the Truma 
box and just attach the rail there so that we can attach this on the rail. We just had to remove two screws. The screws are star head screws and the slots on the rail are bigger than the screw heads, so we had to use a washer. Once your rail is installed, you just have to slide the box on top of it and then you can start your connections. We ran the white tube behind the wall along with the other lines to keep it out of the way. Now we attach the white tube on the left side where it says out. I put the compression washer on the, on the hose with the nut and I'm doing it before I put the pecs on because it's gonna be easier because I don't have enough room to tighten it down. He's cutting the pecs right here and have some towels ready because it will leak some water even if you did drain some water out. Now you just push your shark bite into place. Easy peasy. We attach the brackets for the filter to the floor and you can see in a later picture that it will be easy to get to when we need to replace the filter. Notice on the filter that there's an inlet end and an outlet end. The inlet of course is going to come from your PEX shark bite and the outlet is going to go to your faucet. Now for the 12 volt power connection, we need to separate the red wire from the black wire so that we can splice the wires into the kitchen wiring. We use these quick splice connectors. The yellow ones are the ones that we used. Once you have all your connections made, you can zip tie things to keep them in place. Donna and I would like to thank you all for watching this video. If you got anything out of it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and smash the notification button. It really helps the algorithms of YouTube to help us get seen. So again, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. You're not gonna wanna miss that one. You can verify that the power's connected correctly by turning on the faucet. The box underneath will light up blue and the ring around the faucet will light up blue as well. We put the shelf back into place under the sink and you can see the red arrow pointing to the water filter which is an easy place to be able to pull it out and change it when we need to.